How are we all doing? Good. Now we've got thunderstorms brewing outside here, so if any time you see a big bolt of lightning and me disappear, you'll know uh, you'll know what happened. So I would like you to come to a comfortable seated position. I'm going to mute you all. And um, if you need to unmute at all, just come up and unmute yourself. Nice. <clears throat> Take a moment to wriggle around and make sure you feel comfortable. You can sit up as tall as you like. You can be kneeling on blocks or cross-legged or have your legs extended. So by now you are starting to get the repeated message that in our yin yoga, we want to be in a position where you feel stable, but relaxed. Trying to marry those two features together. Ease of being and structure, foundation. If you sit on top of something, on the edge of that something, it's going to tilt the pelvis forward and open up the front of the body. And if you rock from side to side gently, you can make little micro rocks in the pelvis. Just make sure you feel a groundedness on the sit bones. And then bring the back of the hands against the thighs create a triangular structure using the arms to help support the chest. Now you can make a couple of rolls with the shoulders if you like, up, back and down, forward, up, back and down. Just feel the shoulders. We're going to work on the shoulders a bit tonight. Notice if there's any discomfort in the shoulders, any pain, any ease. Just take note. No need to analyze, you're just simply noticing. And then draw the shoulders up, back and down. One final time, hold them back and down. And imagine you've just created a, a doorway. So your posture is a doorway, the frame of a door. Where you can step out into the world or you can step back inside. Let your eyes gently close or get soft and hazy. start to fall back inside. Notice the breath. Allow your breath to be as it is. No technique. Let each new breath get a little slower. And let this slowing down of the breath be a guide for the way you do your practice tonight. As you transition from one pose to another.
Let the transition be slow and gentle. Check in if you have any intention for your practice tonight. So many ways we can use the practice. Could be for the body. Could be for the mind. It could be for a different context altogether. How would you like to use tonight's practice? On the next inhale, gently press down with the sit bones and lift the back of the skull up a little higher. So you just got a little taller in the back. As you exhale, turn the head to the left. Notice the sensations in the neck. Inhale, neutral. On the next exhale, right turn the head, feel the sensations. Inhale, neutral. This time as you exhale, turn the head and bring that right hand over to the left thigh. You can hold clothing or thigh. Not too deep a twist. And then take the left hand behind the back into a half bind. Let the left arm be easy. You can tuck the fingers of the left hand into the waistline of the pants if that works. Just imagine you're stuck in this pose. Notice your response to being stuck. Do you fight against it? Or could you surrender into it? Could you relax the shoulders a little more? Could you allow yourself to be contained like this? without resistance. Notice the breath. Notice if there's a tendency to strain to breathe or in that surrender to this pose, could you allow the breath to flow? As the body starts to adjust, as it relaxes into the twist, inhale, sit up a little taller, and as you exhale, bring that left hand back a little more and let the right hand anchor you a little more securely into a deeper twist. Resist the temptation to turn the neck, just allow the chin to hover over the chest. Feel the twist in the thoracic spine, the shoulders. We'll give the shoulders a lot of attention today. Notice what happens to the core of the body as you hold in a twist. Does it get warmer? Notice your response to that warmness. Do you resist or can you surrender? 
two more breaths. Gently release the anchors, the hands, allow the body to unwind itself. Using the transition gently and slowly. As you sweep the right hand behind you. <clears throat> and the left hand comes across. And because we're not symmetrical internally. This side might feel different. A new structure, a new constraint. Do I resist or surrender? And as you surrender, Gently allow the shoulders to relax. And if you feel any natural opening, it could be an invitation calling you to deepen the twist. Resisting the temptation to strain the neck. Do I breathe more? Choppy and shallow in this position or can I surrender and allow the breath to simply move through me with ease? As the body warms And I let myself sink into that warmness. For four more breaths. On that fourth exhale, let the transition be gentle, natural, soft, slow. Notice the after effect as you gently extend the right leg. Extend the right leg, bringing the left foot against that right thigh. Toes curled back towards the shin. Feel this first movement of half butterfly as you sit up nice and tall. And you can either grab the back of the leg or you can grab a tie around the foot or you can bring your hands down onto the ground. And let this first stepping inside this pose simply be a small hinge forward. And notice how the body responds to that first movement. Does the body get all excited and the shoulders and the neck and the face all want to get involved? Or could they surrender and just allow this to happen right down in the hips and the waist and the low back? Could the shoulders, neck and head trust the lower body has got this? <clears throat>
if you can bring your attention into the low body, the hips and the belly and the ribs. See if you can lift the ribs away from the hips and create a little more space to melt forward. The hands could come closer to the foot. And feel the chest moving towards the toes and the toes moving towards the chest so the hamstring starts to electrify. How much electricity can you take? Where it feels deliciously uncomfortable. Sometimes just bringing the toes back, spreading the toes, adding a little more dynamic flexion to that foot can make all the difference. Now for the last 30 seconds, invite the head to drop down towards the knee, starting to round the back. And even though the back is rounding, Can the foot remember to curl back towards the crown of the head? And like a magnet, the crown of the head is drawn towards the toes. So there's this sustained lengthening, even though there's a rounding. For two more breaths. On the second exhale, walk the hands back along the leg or the ground. Let the hands gently bring you up. Lean back into the hands for a moment. <sighs> and just notice what happened to that right leg. Bend the left knee. Straighten the left leg and bring the right foot against the left thigh. <clears throat> Sit up nice and tall. And lift the corners of the mouth for a moment and smile towards the shoulders, the neck and the head and just say, "We got this fellas. You don't need to do anything. And then start to hinge forward towards that extended leg. Noticing if the shoulders and neck and head trust you. Hands can walk out towards the foot or along the leg or onto a tie. Start to feel the accumulation of sensation in the back of that leg. And allow yourself to melt forward until you find that position that's a blend of ease, shape, structure, and sensation. Like you're creating the perfect cocktail inside the body and the mind. And then notice if the breath can start to slow down. As the sensation builds. Let the low body take care of this. Toes curl back, drive out through the left heel Engage the left leg. Let the hips relax, right knee comes down towards the ground. Lift the rib cage, create a little more space and melt forward a little more. And for this last 30 seconds, 
You can invite the head towards the knee, creating a rounding. Creating a rounding and remembering the lengthening. The rounding being the ease and relaxation. The lengthening being the growth of sensation for two more breaths. <clears throat> On the second exhale, let the transition slowly bring you up. Lean back and stand your feet on the edges of your mat and come off your bolster. <clears throat> Gently sway the knees from side to side. The next time the knees come all the way over to one side, come onto all fours. Come into tabletop, <clears throat> facing the top of your mat. Hands under shoulders, knees under hips. And just take a moment to feel the spine as you come into cat and cow here. after that big forward bend. And then when you're ready, come all the way down onto the belly, stacking the hands under the forehead, and straddle the feet out nice and widely. Notice how your body is reacting to this new shape. Could you surrender a little more or not? Make little micro movements with the neck and head. Feel the low back after all that engagement. And then squeeze the buttocks and press the pelvis into the floor and feel how the low back is supported by that movement. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, squeeze, press, and lift the head, shoulders, chest. Elbows, come onto your elbows. Have the elbows close enough so that the hands can reach the upper arms. Release the hands to the floor. Bring your attention into the shoulders and the neck. Give the shoulders a little wriggle a little encouragement to relax. Gently drop the chin to the chest and feel the back of the neck traction out. And in that tractioning, can the shoulder blades slide down towards the spine? <clears throat> and then through micro adjustments, micro movements, find your Goldilocks point where this feels delicious, supportive. You feel an untethering in the front of the body from the knees, into the hips, into the belly. Slowly lengthening and relaxing.
Now ask yourself at this point, is this where I want to hang out and sustain for a little longer? Am I looking for nourishment in this pose? Or would I like a little more intensity or a little less intensity? If you'd like less intensity, drop back to crocodile pose. Otherwise, lift the chin, press the hands into the mat and bring the hands out to the edges of the mat. Fingers point outwards, thumbs point ahead. As the elbows straighten into seal pose, check in with the shoulders, the low back, hips, neck. If there's anything that's not nourishing, let it go. Make some kind of adjustment. So think of this as three options, depending on what your body's asking you for tonight. Does it want this more intense seal pose, which can intensify by walking the hands closer to the body? Or is it that variation of sphinx, not so high? Or is it crocodile, going deep down into the low back, and then slow the breathing down, notice what's happening to the core of the body if it's warming up, what's happening to the nervous system, for two more breaths. Exhale, gently bend the knees. Stack the hands on the forehead. And then bend the knees and bring the knees a little closer together and rock from side to side. Exhale, release as you drop the feet to the floor, hands under shoulders, press up one more time into tabletop. And notice what it's like to do cat and cow after a back bend. And then I'm going to ask you to amass your props. So I'll show you what I'm getting ready here. I've got a bolster in front of my knees. I'm going to have two blocks stacked on top of each other with a blanket folded up eight to ten inches in front of the bolster. So I've got two piles. Pile number one, closer to my knees, probably a little lower. We're all gonna have different experiences here. Pile number two, a little higher in front. And then drape your belly onto that first pile. So your belly's on that first pile. Your elbows are between the two piles. And if you can look what I'm doing, I'm just resting my head against the the other pile. So just jiggle around here until you get that set up. And bring your elbows under your shoulders, palms down on the floor. Walk your right hand out to the left side of the mat and your left hand to the right side of the mat so your shoulder blades come apart.
Now it's the lower body's turn to relax. The upper body is, well, the middle upper body, the upper back and the shoulder blades are really the center of focus now. Make sure the head is supported and comfortable. Hands are flat, shoulder blades apart from each other. If you have rotated cuff issues here, just adjust until you feel delicious discomfort, not pain. Take note of which elbow is on top. As you settle in, as the body adjusts to this new structure, invite that ease of being through the breath, through relaxation, through ease. And feel this dialogue between the structure the sensation that you've created in the shoulders and this ease of being. Imagine the ease of being as trying to encourage the structure to expand a little wider, to walk out a little further. and then allow the structure to communicate back its enoughness, its sufficiency, not overdoing it, being comfortable with what is appropriate. Let the ease of being flood the body once again through breath and relaxation. For two more breaths. On the next exhale, <clears throat> bring the elbows back under the shoulders, releasing the tension. <clears throat> Open up the arms like big wings, palms resting out from the shoulders. Let the shoulders jiggle around for a moment. <clears throat> and then bring the hands back under. Opposite shoulder on top this time. So remember which sh shoulder was on top, which elbow was on top. Notice there may be a different range of motion on this side. Walk your hands out until you find your Goldilocks sensations between the shoulder blades. Once your structure has found its edge, Bring your attention back to ease of being. Letting the breath flow through you. When you're aware that you feel very comfortable, invite the structure to expand a little further apart.
Slow the breath down. Three more breaths. And that last Exhale, release. Bring your hands onto your bolster under the chest and push up for a moment. Walk your knees in towards that bolster and simply come down into a kind of child's pose, supported by the bolster. A little rocking from side to side. <clears throat> releasing the back and then when you're ready removing your props putting them to one side come onto your back and if you have a strap handy <clears throat> you can have a strap Extend the legs, extend the hands, palms face up. <clears throat> Bend the right knee and squeeze the right knee towards the right shoulder. <clears throat> Curling the toes back towards the shin. Now the upper body, the, the biceps, the hands, the wrists are all actively engaged, squeezing that right knee. At the same time, can you relax the shoulders and the shoulder blades after that long opening? Keep hold of the right knee and grab the right foot and gently pull back into supine swan or supine pigeon pose. Arms gripping strongly here, just pulling you back. Right foot towards the left hip or the left rib cage. And for those very fortunate souls, you can wrap the right leg around the back of the neck. So find that pigeon pose that really speaks to your hips right now. I've just adjusted by grabbing just my right ankle and using both hands on my right ankle. And that feels good. Right knee drops further away. So for me, I like that small change. Can you explore in this time, these few minutes, how you want to bring joy into your hips, into your leg, into your life? Where's that joyful sensation right now? Deep breath in, relax any tension with a sigh.
Now the transition is simply going to go into supine dragon. This is where you might enjoy the strap. If you have a strap, put it over that right foot and then simply face the right foot to the ceiling. Right knee is bent and the strap, you're holding the strap with the right hand or your hand can wrap around the foot. So you've got that nice flat foot facing the heavens. Put your cup of tea on it so it doesn't spill. The upper thigh will be feeling a lot here. Bring a lot of tension into the knee joint without the body's weight. Toes flex back towards the shin. So the Achilles tendon will also be feeling this stress, this encouragement to moisten the tendon. Notice where you feel the sensations the most, where your attention is mostly drawn. this structure of holding to blend with the ease of being. As if you're gazing out at the ocean amidst this intensity and just feeling the ease for two more breaths. And on that second breath, release the right foot back to the mat and then let the right foot rest against the left thigh in tree pose. Let the hands simply go. Notice the sensations of letting go. Can I surrender to that letting go? Or do I resist the letting go? Just notice. What's the preference here? Resisting. Or letting go. Two more breaths. On that second breath, extend the right leg. Bend the left knee. And then squeeze the left knee towards the left shoulder. You might feel the thigh against your ribs. Make any micro adjustments where it feels good. Push out through that right leg. After all that bending, the right leg wants to straighten. Toes spread out and curl back. Shoulder blades snug into the mat. When you're ready, grab that left foot. Moving towards your 
pigeon or swan pose here. Check for your level of ease or disease. Make any micro movements of adjustment and start to explore on this side. Do I get more nourishment by grabbing just the foot and letting the knee fall away as I deepen the pigeon pose? Or does this leg and hip like to be more supported, wrapped, held, like a little baby in a cradle? Where do I feel sensation? Maybe in the foot, ankle, knee, hip. Where does my attention get called to? Can I hold my foot in a different way? Taking your time as you start to transition towards dragon. So the knee stays bent. The foot curls back towards the left shin and the hand grabs hold of the strap or the edge of the foot. belly is exposed and open and free to breathe. And the shoulders and the shoulder blades might need reminding that they can stay at ease, stay easy. And scan through the body. Where is my attention mostly attracted? Where am I feeling this the most? Can I make any micro adjustments here so that it's not overly pulling my attention away from ease of being? So I feel this in the hamstring, the back of the knee, the hip. And I slow my breath down. And over time, the joint will start to lubricate to Moisten. And over weeks, months, years, this joint will open slowly, revealing its secrets, its memories. And all you have to do is be patient, be Consistent and patient. Time is on your side. For three more breaths. On that third exhale, release to tree pose.
once again notice am I drawn to let go or to resist to hold on once the struggle is over do I continue to struggle or can I simply let it go Noticing these tendencies as you extend that left leg. Relax. And then bending the knees, rock the knees from side to side. The next time the knees come to the right, pause. Reach the right arm above the head. Did I get that right? Knees are to the left, arm is extended arm to the right. So sorry about that. So opposite arm extended from the knees to whatever side they're on. Let the body breathe itself. Do I struggle or do I let go? Two more breaths. On that second inhale, lift the knees, exhale the knees to the opposite side, extend the opposite arm. Three more breaths. On the third exhale, roll to one side, come up onto the knees. Take your time. onto all fours walk the hands out into a puppy stretch inhale walk the hands back underneath you now make sure there's plenty of padding under the knees here and then take that right arm underneath the left arm and thread the needle and allow your head, the side of the head, to come down onto the mat or a block. Make sure the head is at ease here. As much as possible having the totality of that right arm against the ground. Adjust in any way whatsoever. Sometimes if you bring the bolster under your belly that can take a little pressure off if this is too much. Now bring your attention into the right shoulder, the right shoulder blade. If 
Is there resistance? Caution, care here? Or is there an ease, a letting go, an untethering? Or is there both? Is there both at the same time? Is there a moving from one to the other? A letting go. A caution, a care, a restraint. Two more breaths. Inhale, come up. Place both hands under the shoulders. A little slow, gentle cat and cow here. And then threading that left hand underneath. Dropping the left side of the head onto a block or, or the mat. How much of that left arm from the shoulder down to the fingernails can rest against the mat? You'll feel this in the neck as well as the shoulder blade. And then bring your attention into that dance between ease of being and letting go and caution taking care breathing making micro movements of adjustment until you find that position where you can be still where you can simply be in the pose slow the breath down Two more breaths. On that second exhale, let the right hand press up. <clears throat> Come onto your <clears throat> one of your thighs and simply swing the feet to the top of the mat. Slowly come down onto your back. Stand the feet on the edges of the mat. Bring the hands out 90 degrees, palms up. Notice how the shoulders and the shoulder blades feel. Snug the shoulder blades into your mat. And make sure the back of the neck feels long. Whether you need something under it or not, the head or not. Let the top of the body settle into a, an ease of being, a relaxation. Neck, head, shoulders, chest back, arms, hands, elbows, everything goes limp. 
saw. And then for a moment, position the feet in such a way that you can straighten the hips and decide if you want to keep the feet flat on the mat or if you want to bring the soles of the feet together or just extend the legs out into pentacle. And this time, rather than an equal share of structure and ease of being, be in a position where ease of being is the dominant player. What can I let go? Could it be in the elbow? Could it be one of the vertebra in the back? Could it be in my pinky toe? Where am I holding unnecessarily? Or perhaps I need support, something under the knees. And then bring your attention to the throat. How can my throat relax? I let the low jaw hinge open, the throat relax. Let the tongue come into Shavasana. Decide if you'd like to stay here longer in Shavasana or not. Perhaps your evening has plenty of space to just be still, to be at ease. Perhaps your evening has a little more structure that is calling you to transition gently and slowly. Do you choose which of those two pathways you'd like to travel as you make your way back to a comfortable seat if you're coming into the transition? Transitions need to be slow and gentle, unhurried, without disturbing that ease of being. feeling all the space in the world to bring the hands together in prayer and gratitude for this this time together namaste thank you folks appreciate that if this has dropped you into a cone of silence, by all means, you can just turn your machine off if you have a little energy for chattering. You can also chatter, so it's up to you. Thank you, Larry. My pleasure. Thank you for coming. 
Thanks, Bruce. Have a good evening. Thank you. Bye, Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all. Get those shoulders going, Tom. Thank you, Bruce. Thanks, Sue. Nice to see you. Best to Jay. You too. Great. I'll just turn you off.